dear friends in our previous lecture we have tried to understand different branches of earth science and how best and where and why there is a need for engineering of these resources that is how earth resources and their engineering and we have reached to a conclusion that the knowledge of internal structure and composition plus the resources inside their nature their behavior concentration characteristic characteristics are important for civil engineering activities especially and society in general now we go further after studying understanding the different branches of earth sciences and broad content of those we go ahead with our studies on internal structure and composition the earth is a unique planet we know and this is the only planet and this is where we live and it provides a plenty of resources for our sustainability and we have to extract those resources plus earth is a peculiar it responds to like other planets we do not know much about earth responds to the external forces as well as internal forces external forces we have heard sun moon and earth if they come in a line how higher tidal waves are generated due to attraction we do not have much control on this at the moment we can take precaution but there are certain type of forces which are generated within inside the earth certainly we can take precaution to certain extent we can manage and control and how best we can deal with them that we are trying to understand ultimately our aim is to provide a better service to the society for that we must know what is the peculiar nature of earth's internal structure and composition before going deep into the internal structure and composition we have a primary knowledge about how the earth formed does this have any implications on internal structure and composition and our knowledge yes like any other planet earth also originated from the sun we all have studied at earth was not like this there was a hot ball of gas like sun and the on a star close passed very close to the star sun pulled mass of air from the sun's atmosphere and these gases gradually cooled condensed and formed the planet earth is like that and during the early stage this was a hot gas then gradually condensed to liquid and then solidified during this process a kind of a differentiation has taken place that is denser materials go into deeper moderately denser still lighter materials outside this kind of a differentiation this is theory and probably true also and whether it is a true or false we shall also apply some knowledge of physics chemistry other planets what we find in industry example what we find in blast furnace the reduced metals and nick goes into the deeper part unreduced unreduced oxides or sulfides and silicates in the middle layer and mostly the silicate in the upper layer what we see in the blast furnace from a molten stage if a differentiation has taken place 
this must be the structure. Yes, earth must be like this. This is one. The earth's density, yes, average density of the earth is 5.5. Disturbance at the The Earth's average density is 5.5. But the rocks what we get on the surface of the Earth do not have more than 3 point something. Rarely it is more. And if at all we have any rocks just at the boundary between the crust and the mantle. Yes, they are denser. Probably it indicates from surface down to the deeper, deeper, must be made up of a denser and denser material that should give the average high density. And this means there is a kind of a gradual increase in density of the material once again due to the differentiation. And earth has a unique shape. Now, this is one aspect. During now and then, we get volcanoes on the earth. This volcano brings a lot of liquid-like material. Is the interior is a liquid, fluid-like? Is there any con a large reservoir of liquid, hot liquid like rock melt? Do we have? How come? the volcanoes come, they bring a lot of this hot liquid like material. Is that inside is there a reservoir or totally liquid? A confusion. If there were a liquid like layer inside the earth, then problem arises. Due to attraction of the sun or moon and rotation, over so many years, our shape did not change. It means it must be a rigid body. Therefore, it did not yield to the attraction of the sun or during rotation. Therefore, Earth's interior may not be fluid. That is another argument. Therefore, what exactly internal structure and composition? As we go deeper, 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 the density of the material increases. At a given point inside the earth, for example, there must be a lot of pressure due to overlying material. In thermodynamics, we read, as the pressure increases, temperature also increases. What is the role of pressure? to compress, contract the material. The role of temperature has to expand. These are two contradictory forces. At a given point inside the earth, we have both high pressure and high temperature. As the depth increases, temperature also increases. We call the gradient of the temperature increases with the depth. At a given point, if there is a high temperature and high pressure, two contradictory forces, what is the nature of that material? This is another question arises. Then, we have heard volcano, it is a liquid like. How this liquid formed here? Because as the pressure increases, the melting point also increases. The material inside cannot melt that easily because of the high melting point. How come this liquid then to have volcano? Something funny, interesting. Therefore, all these issues make us complication of our issues of understanding the earth. Yes, during volcano, a lot of materials come and these have a high temperature. So high temperature, it means inside is a high temperature. That must we know, sure. Yes, with this basic understanding and what we have seen 
during our blast furnace or during other planets and we have also meteorites here and there are now and then falling on the earth we have the opportunity to analyze them and all these indicates earth must be like this let us try to develop theories hypothesis and then whatever possible experimental setup we have we shall try to understand internal structure before we go i have to use so many terms connected with this and that is i repeat crust mantle little inside then core little deeper inside what must be core made up of people generally talk about must be made up of iron and nickel must be very high density 7 8 like that to give average density of 5.5 yes mantle must be made up of some high density material iron and magnesium and crust must be lighter materials like silicate alumina silica like that people talk yes from there we shall try to build our understanding yes we know earth is the only planet that harbors earth no, life it is the third planet from the sun and the only planet in the universe that supports life for support of life we know the present oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen composition we know the water we know the temperature we know all these are essential to support life in addition the resources resources may be there for in the other planets we have moon mars etc people are exploring but whether they have such a kind of atmospheric composition water which can sustain life yet to explore they may have some metals like as we have but certainly my understanding they do not have that kind of resources because the atmospheric process is so important in concentration of the resources they are recycling if they do not have this kind of atmosphere they cannot have this kind of process of recycling weathering erosion concentration all those anyway so therefore earth is unique according to the radiometric dating and other sources of evidence earth formed somewhere around 4.6 billion years ago we have the zircon got from uh, jackels australia recorded 4.2 4.3 billion years when the earth formed first perhaps it took so many years to cool and solidify and that solid zircon perhaps formed somewhere around 4.3 billion and that much of period it took time to consolidate and solidify so the first hot ball of gas got detached from somewhere here it is a theory and from there we have the first formed rock from that we got the zircon and we have studied so this theory 4.3 and to to solidify thermodynamic equations we have applied perhaps this much time it required to solidify anyway about 71% of the earth surface is covered with water a unique planet no other planet on the uh, in the universe have this much yes mostly it is ocean the remaining 29% is land this composition of a land and water is so important in climate cycling and controlling the recycling we will come into uh, this stage a little later this 29% consists of land continents and islands and we have some lakes we have rivers and 
these are all together 29 excludes this 71% excludes the rivers and lakes 29% consists of this rivers and lakes okay and other sources of water that contribute to hydrosphere are that ice caps those are also part of yes so this is about broadly about earth now the structure of the earth people scientists study the earth in a two ways depends on their interest we are try to combine chemically earth is divided into the crust topmost silicate layer then mantle little below it then core this layering is by chemical properties it has important implications on many of the earth's activities whether we talk about the earthquake or volcano or plate tectonics resources many things mechanically also it is divided into lithosphere uppermost layer a rigid hard asthenosphere somewhat like plastic like mesosphere then outer core then inner core a very high density material and respond differently for the elastic waves like earthquake waves etc the cities are mechanical property their property shears load bearing el elastic waves travel through them it's all govern these physical properties mostly density etc so basically based on mechanical properties and chemical properties we divide in any way we have we may have chemically three important mechanically we may have some more layers inside yes now we shall try this is the outermost layer of the earth solid to sphere solid brittle earth we call the crust within the crust there may be some depressions where we have the ocean if the ocean depth on an average the pacific is the greatest so on an average 3000 meter depth it may be very here and there okay so we have the crust and 71% is covered with the sea and it is deeper below the sea the crust become thin if we have so if this is the layer the crustal part is very thin on the land below the mountain this is the ocean water below the ocean there is a the crust become thin and then we have the below layers okay we have the crust on an average the crustal thickness is 40 km below the sea it may be 6 km to 12 km below the land it may be 60 km even occasionally maybe but the outer most layer crust is on an average 40 km thick okay it's a brittle material we have little below is asthenosphere it is solid but ductile plastic like nature shear stress is very less so then we have on the second we have hydrosphere that is a sea then we have outermost layer that atmosphere then in interior we are going we are interested in mesosphere we have also called mantle and this is interesting this is a crust solid this is a ductile material this is solid what is nature we do not know much let us see and inside further we have the core core is especially the inner core is made up of iron and nickel and composition wise just now i have said the outermost layer crust is rich in 
silicates iron silicates are less locally they get concentrated but silicates are rich in alumina what is a silicate a metal and oxide combined metal and oxides oxygen combined oxide metal al2o3 na2o2 fe2o3 these are all oxides when alumina along with the oxides and metal they combine it becomes silicate example al2 si3 o8 is a feldspar al2 si3 o8 al2 alumina silicon is silicon is a metal so in chemistry they call metal in engineering we do not call it a metal for us metal means ductile and malleable alumina iron etc we call metal so for us this is a metal in chemistry they also call this silicon is also metal whatever it may be one metal non metal combined with oxygen forms a silicate that is earth crust is made of how such silicates in a large number lighter material if we go deeper somewhere here right etc there are also but they are also instead of this one large iron also in significant proportion that is iron is also there in the silicate so obviously presence of iron and magnesium their density increases thus we have mesosphere now earth top most shell is composed of silicate rich lighter silicates deeper deeper we go we have the man mesosphere we call mantle especially the upper mantle we do not know much about the deeper part of the mantle intermediate part or upper layer of the mantle upper part of the mantle is rich in fe and mg rich silicates like olivin peridotite these are the minerals present so this is broadly three layer of the earth i repeat this is a rigid body this is more ductile and this is ductile but solid we do not know much about this broadly in composition lighter silicates higher denser silicates and metals nickel and iron rich metals this is broadly in composition and broadly in physical properties in brief we shall go much deeper now yes thickness wise below the mountain they may up to 70 km on an average they 40 km we have said below that we have a mantle it extends up to see there is a transition from 670 km down on an average up to 2900 km down we have the mantle we can classify into upper mantle lower mantle even upper mantle middle mantle lower mantle people classify then we have the core upper core lower core this is the dimension that is up to 6370 km along the radius of the earth this is the thickness of the earth we have this much here to here is the core here to here is the mantle and then we have the crust so boundary between the crust and the mantle is called morovic discontinuity here and above that we call lithosphere asthenosphere is part of the lithosphere that is upper crust they call a layer and b layer crust and upper layer we call lithosphere below is a asthenosphere then below is a mantle upper mantle like that the boundary between the crust and mantle is called morovic discontinuity a scientist who first found this 
boundary between upper mantle and the lower mantle this is the upper mantle and the lower mantle somewhere around 970 670 people classified in different way called rapidity discontinuity the boundary between lower mantle and between lower mantle and the outer core lower mantle and the outer core this one we can call gutenberg discontinuity a scientist who discovered this on an average at a depth of 2900 km bgl means below ground level wherever it bgl please read below ground level boundary between outer core and the inner core this is the outer core inner core this is the boundary white one 5000 150 approximately Lehman discontinuity. These are different discontinuities. How we found this discontinuity is depends on the observation based on geophysical experiments or our studies on earthquakes. What we got some inferences from that. Now, in what way we society is concerned with whether interior is there, fluid or solid, in what way we are living on the earth crust, core, in what way we are connected, yes, important, especially for society and civil engineers. What is the crust? This is where we live. I am worried about my home. So simple. Yes, the crust is the outer layer of the earth extends up to 60 or 70 kilometer below beneath the continents about 10 kilometer to 12 kilometer below the sea. At the bottom of the crust the velocity of the seismic wave increases suddenly. As we go from here to here, here at this there is a sudden increase in seismic waves. What is seismic wave? Whenever there is an earthquake they generated different types of energy waves. We call P wave primary wave, S wave secondary wave, L wave, L O U V E, love wave. Particularly, we are interested in the P wave and the S wave. I come into that uh, details a little later. The velocity of this P and S wave suddenly change from here across this boundary. And therefore, that gives us an inference that there is a change in composition of the material. Why? In the laboratory experiment when we have studied this P, P wave or S wave, they travel with a characteristic velocity. P waves travel with increasing velocity with denser, denser, denser material. And if there is a sudden change in the density, there is sudden increase in the velocity. That we have observed here at this. Similarly, S wave behaves with the depth, its velocity increases, increases with the depth, but not that high P wave. S wave also increases with the velocity with the depth, with the denser material. It means there is a gradual change, but at this contact there is a sudden change year to year. Gradual, sudden increase in the velocity means sudden change in the composition of the material. Yes. The crust mantle boundary is known as the Morovic. We have already said this. Okay. Upper crust, what we have called this is upper crust is this is a lower crust, asthenosphere, then I have said upper crust is made of a light density silicate materials. There I have defined alumina, silica combined with oxygen, they form lighter silicates. Such materials are larger in number. Below that we have Cl, Si and alumina is the uppermost crust, below is Sima. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, here it is, okay. Upper one is silica rich SI and alumina, we short form CL we call. 
lower crust it is called same silica and magnesium they have higher specific gravity composition silica and magnesium below that this is we are talking about a mantle we have we have oceanic crust consists only of silt we below this ocean we have oceanic crust they consists only of cymalaya why a question arises that's also part of the earth crust but this is made up of simg magnesium layer whereas this is made up of more of si and aluy question arises simple it is the c this is very close the thickness of the crust is only 10 to 12 km close to the mantle this point if i this point if i correspond it is just close to the mantle than this point it means something if has to be added from the mantle it has to travel a long distance to reach here whereas in a shorter span or just a 10 or 12 km mantle material can reach the ocean bottom obviously mantle material is more added to the sea bottom the sea oceanic crust we call crust below the ocean oceanic crust more material from the mantle is easily added it is more rich in sima whereas that much, that much quantity of material from the mantle cannot reach obviously suppose a material generated here at a depth of say 1000 degree temperature it has to travel a long distance to reach this point by the time it loses its all temperature it become get solidified somewhere it got solidified here whereas here it does not it has to travel only 10 or 12 km so how much temperature it may lose it may lose only 100 200 still it is able to reach and it still liquid therefore such material can easily reach the sea bottom or sea crust oceanic crust is therefore rich in silica and magnesia whereas continental crust is not that rich only lighter materials can travel yes earth's mantle it extends from up to depth of 2890 km say nearly 3000 2900 km we call making it the thickest layer of the earth more thick is a core of course the pressure at the bottom of the mantle is similar to this much of pressure the mantle is composed of silicate just now we said iron magnesium rich sima as you go deeper deeper iron also become important in the upper layer si and a si m a rich silicate as you go deeper iron also iron magnesium uh, silicates so although it is solid the high temperature within the mantle cause the silicate material to be sufficiently ductile that it can flow on very long distance so therefore convection of the mantle is expressed at the surface through the motion of the tectonic plate earth's topmost layer crust we call and it is broken into a number of small part we call plates these plate can easily ride this is a rigid material easily ride over the ductile material what is the force for this movement we will come to know shortly and there are convection cells which drive this the melting point and viscosity of a substance depends on the pressure i have already said as there is a intense and increasing pressure as we go deeper and deeper into the mantle the lower, lower part of the mantle flows less easily than the upper mantle because pressure is also high melting point is also high 
although temperature may be high but because of pressure they are not the fluid like means they are not highly ductile like as that of the upper mantle viscosity of the mantle ranges between 1021 and 1200 pa pascal so depending on the depth in comparison the viscosity of water is approximately this much and that of the it is this much so this one is much higher than this amorphous layer like material therefore the lower part of the mantle is a different than the higher part of the mantle based both by their chemistry and physical properties obviously that their behavior is also different yes no this has very important implications in understanding our crust so forget about the core now for the time being the upper mantle and the lower mantle what happens this a ductile material imagine a fluid like not strictly fluid a ductile material plastic like a tar you melt how it is so there are convection cells what is this convection cells high temperature get heated they become lighter and move to the surface and the this is replaced by material from the surface get heated because of the temperature become lighter they rise up and the cooler material they go down they sets a kind of circular motion we call convection cell now this is how they are going on now the materials goes here materials goes here what may happen high temperature material reaches here they partially melt this material and become thin when the material melt. so rigid body become thin here this is the place where they rise they rise and therefore this plate it can be one day broken when it is broken into there is adjacent to this there is a current moving downward so there is a downward pull of the material this lighter material is pulled down see this is a crystal part this is a crystal part but this lighter material is get pulled into down and when two plates they come in contact one plate ride over the other this is the place where one plate move below the other subduction and at the fronts we have when two plates come come they collide 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 a deeper part trench like material a trench like system is it developed when it become a deeper trench like material depression obviously it attracts a sediments here thick accumulation of sediment is possible the plate move below one plate moves above this is called a subduction so because of the convection cells crust is broken into different number of plates number of plates we call rigid plates these rigid plates because of the currents drive see they drive they drive the plates current like this they drive the plates so when different plates they move in a different direction or they move in the same direction this plate come this way this plate come this way this plate come this way. two plates may come and collide two plates may move apart where they move apart where they collide is very important that it determines where volcanic activity has to happen where earthquakes can occur where crust is thin where crust is thick where sediment accumulation and this convection can bring materials from deeper part to the shallow part so earth's interior if rich in gold and they can bring this convection cell bring material from deeper level to the shallow level 
from shallow they can take them to the deeper level there is a cyclic process Re this can even recycle the resources yes deeper part of the material can come to the surface and they here they get added but here they go deeper taken to the depth brought to the surface a cycle so plates of lithosphere move around over the hot mantle and mantle sets this driving force the convection current within the mantle is a major source driving force for movement of the continents these continents or plates can move apart and together then we have a plate tectonics plate movement yes because of this a different continents move apart now in the past there was only pangae we call all these are so many continents were together now they have broken this is equatorial region and they are broken into laurasia and gondwana continent broken into laurasia and gondwana and this we see further they were move they were so many continents there were so many other continents and here also they split further over a geological period once upon a time great continent broken into two again broken into further they move apart they come collide and together so many things happen and this a cyclic once the land mass may collide they may move apart again they may collide it all happened in geological period this we call continental drift that is the upper most layer of earth crust is broken into number of rigid plates these plates move either to towards each other or away from each other and that is the continental drift and that is where important how exactly if we have a convection take a jar put a water put some uh, light dust materials like wooden material dust materials like and heat it you will find the materials cycle in a convection pattern if we have two floating bodies say wooden piece you put they may move apart if we have they may dive they come together it means lighter materials they move apart or come together depending on the forces below it and they collide or they collide one plate move below the other we have a subduction they move away from the each other like so this is the a mechanism the internal structure of the earth therefore as we said crust mantle core crust is divided into continental and oceanic crust just now we have discussed the continent crust also known as cl and oceanic crust as a same this we have just now defined continental crust composed of granites whereas oceanic crust composed of basalts just now we have said why the mantle material can reach easily to the ocean bottom and enrich the oceanic crust lighter material can only reach the crust enrich them with the silica and aluminum therefore lighter and crust is rich in lighter silicates ocean crust rich in cia s i a l crust s i m a oceanic crust like that earth's lithosphere is divided into several rigid plates tectonic plates that migrate across move apart or come together this is the summary what we have just now covered for millions of years this will happen okay what exactly that where two plates come and collide where two plates move apart so moving apart is a divergent boundary so where example wherever there is a movement this is a movement this plate move away move away this is a divergent boundary 
very interesting this is see convergent they this plate and this plate will come together what is happening here important i have two rigid body two rigid body i force them push them push them push them what happens Bo both are rigid body depends on the pressure developed the rigid body is broken and release a sudden energy that is a locus of earthquake i can have earthquake whereas the two plates when move away move away they drive the materials also and this crust become thin and thin hot material can reach the surface hot material is nothing but magma volcano it means constantly material from deeper part of the mantle come and reach the ocean bottom and they build lava material brought and build brought and build that thus we have ocean bottom is enriched in seismic and there is a frequent volcano also what happens this volcano volcano builds builds a mountain like under sea we have ridges developed mid oceanic ridges we call these are all built by the lava brought up what will happen more and more material come they build they build they build and this rigid material if some more lava has to come what should happen they have to drive them away they have to drive them away thus they add material to the crust driving the plates adjacent they force them to move away plus they are adding the material this is the way deeper form deeper mantle materials are added to and they drive the material so this is happening in the plate boundary are therefore active here active in terms of volcanic earthquakes so we have heard 2004 tsunami india plate to more below the sumatran java we had a tsunami and earthquake because it is a plate boundary in the deep in the arabian sea we have mid oceanic ridges the records of earthquakes are or rare because material come they drive the plates and add they do not cause much they behave more plastically and they bring the material therefore here this is a locus of volcano this is the locus of earthquake plate interior suppose this is a plate interior plate boundary boundary this is a boundary boundary this is the plate interior plate interior is relatively stable so it is an important information for me depending on where i am whether i am on the edge of the plate or interior of the plate whether my area is stable or not to earth's internal forces i can decide accordingly i can design and plan my activities major sealing activities therefore requires this knowledge example we will give one example and move further that is i have to bury uranium ash it contained a lead container it is no doubt safe but a lead container also can melt it can withstand 2700 800 like that i have to bury them where can i bury them here here or here the question arises such to answer such kind i need to have this knowledge more deeper we shall go into more deeper in our next class till then now we have try to understand what are the internal earth layers their composition and the process some mechanism behind this process like major earthquake volcano we will continue